Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 19 of the Showbound podcast presented by Axel Watches. I'm your host, Michael Raskin, here alongside Ethan Cardwell. Card, what's going on, man? Uh, not much. It's actually crazy. Um, if you had told me I would have been in Sweden at uh, 1230 at night uh, recording a podcast, I would have told you no ways. But uh, you know what? Dedication to getting that content out there for our listeners. So here we are. Yeah, you've been on the grind and uh, speaking of Sweden, I know you're you're still around, like you said, a um, lot of OHL news kind of circul- circulating on Twitter and stuff. Have you heard anything yet? Any updates on your end? No, to be honest, I haven't heard anything. Um, originally, there was supposed to be like this March 15th deadline that we'd have to come home for or whatnot, but uh, things got changed around on that front, so I'm not too certain what the ohl is thinking if uh, if we're getting pushed back to stay here longer i just it doesn't look like great news but you know what they're uh they're still talking about it and i'm hearing rumors all the time but nothing set in stone so i i don't really have anything for us here yeah for sure and uh well we got a big episode today i know uh we're actually about to record the interview but it's with seth jarvis who's a carolina hurricanes first round pick he went 13th overall this past year recently played with the Chicago Wolves in the AHL where he was over a point per game and has just recently returned back to his junior team, Portland Winterhawks of the WHL. So we're excited to get that one going. I'm excited to chat with him. And um, we got a bit of stuff to talk about before we get there. Cards, I got one I I wanted to bring up and talk to you um, about and get your take on this. So I guess we can, I can break the news actually live on the Showbound podcast. Not that it's that big a deal, but my best buddy, Jordan Sandbrook, who I've mentioned a few times, he just signed with the Florida Everblades in the ECHL. So mm-hmm. not public yet. We're the first ones to break it insiders, but listen yeah. to this. And I want to, I want to get your take on it. Um, I was pretty upset with him. And like, we talked about this, we debated it a bit last night because he's at Brock university playing or he was, um, and he's essentially given up school to pursue pro, which is awesome. Like I was really happy for him, but here's, here's my take on this. Like he's, he's in his second year now, two years to graduate. You can, in my opinion, you can kind of, always go to the ECHL out of that league. Like he, he can go to the ECHL anytime. I told him like, you might as well get the degree first, right? Like it's, it's Mm -hmm. just tough. You're, you're throwing away like a full paid for education from the OHL for this when you can do it after. And for you as a player, what do you think in this situation? Cause like, I understand you want to get the pro career going, but it's, it's tough for me to like lose. First of all, for Brock, he was our best defenseman, but I just think it's, it's hard to throw away a free education when you can just do this soon after what do you think yeah i i I agree with you there um in my opinion i mean it's different for everybody else and good for them for pursuing pro and uh yeah congrats to him but no if if i was in that situation i definitely just stick out the four years like you never know like you're going to the coast there's not a ton of money there it's not like your your contract is you can just throw a portion of your contract aside and you finish school later. Yeah. Um, but no, like if you're getting an NHL deal, you take your whatever 40 grand or 30 grand for two years, put it aside and say, okay, that's for me to go back. But uh, no, it's definitely the, uh, the whole thing about having the degree and taking advantage of the money for sure. Yeah, no, it's interesting. And, and what I was saying too, is like, you know, like I kind of touched on already, you can graduate your four years and always go to the ECHL, but, if you're playing your, your minor league career and, and I'll actually, I'll say this. I do think Samrick has a serious shot of making the NHL one day. Um, when he retires from hockey, he's not going to be a multi-millionaire guy. It, that's just the reality. And I told him that like, so, you know, you can grind it out in the minors, you know, hopefully get that shot in the NHL. But ultimately when he retires from hockey, like he's still going to be needing to work for the rest of his life. He's not going to be set. So I think like to have a degree now that you can then, use after your your pro hockey career it's really important so anyway i i I let him know we'd be debating a little bit or hearing your take on it on the podcast so i just we got into it a bit last night but i'm i'm really happy for him and hey if he makes the nhl then obviously this is probably the best decision of his life so um congrats then uh, then he'll make you look like an idiot Uh, yeah i mean well you're the you're the biggest you're like the biggest like U Sports should hire you as like a recruiter. Like all of our listeners are going to want to go to U Sports. You're always hyping it, so everyone knows. Like, <laughs> it's hey, a sick pro, week. pro, pro, go live the life, live on your own pro. Or Brock, Rascal always say Brock. Yeah. 
every overager listening to this fire me an email or a dm and you can come to brock and maybe we work work something out and get the team going win a national championship together anyway <laughs> yeah i want to mention that congrats to him um also before we send it to the interview we're going to be giving away an axle watch again this episode so holy crap um, man we're just giving away axle so every today. other week we're giving away axle watches just for the listeners only we haven't been posting this on the social media so just for you guys who are hearing this all you got to do is go on the website axlewatch.com a little uh, email pop-up thing is going to show up on your screen and just fill out your email and your name and they're going to be doing a random draw and you can win so make sure you do that giveaways every other week just for our listeners and uh yeah, we're excited. And also, if you want to buy one, make sure you use the code AX underscore showbound for 15% off. We got you. And uh, yeah, I mean, Axel Watch, I've been loving them. And Cardi, you and I are going to be doing a little Axel photo shoot we talked about. So you guys want to see the next faces of Axel right here. And honestly, man, like people would be dumb not to buy one. Like they're so sharp. Like all the boys love them. I see uh, like lately our guys have been getting them from the guest to the pod. So they're super happy about them and if guys were like walking into an nhl arena are happy with their quality of watch i think it's a pretty darn good watch and uh i definitely think everyone should go go out and buy one for sure for sure and and before we send it over to seth jarvis i want to say that covid spring break is right around the corner and you know what that means spring break in your pants manscaped is here to ensure that the party in your pants never stops even Veronica Corningstone wouldn't say no to this pants party. For everyone preparing a pants party this spring break, I have an exclusive 20% off discount. Use code showbound at manscaped.com. And yeah, Manscaped sent Cardi and I a bunch of cool stuff. We've been loving it. Uh, you know, even the, the cologne, definitely want to be using that in your spring break, COVID parties, whatever you're doing for that. I mean, stay safe, everybody, but love the product. Cardi's dad has been milking his cologne off him so yo dude i also i was looking at my thing and is there uh like nose trimmers in there yeah yeah i got one yeah we got have one you, have you used those. it i've used it it's nose and ear i haven't done the ears yet i'm a little scared but it's the nose trimmer is pretty sick it's just like there's no you can't like see the blade or anything so no matter what you can't cut yourself no matter what you do it it's pretty sick but it kind of just like tickles your nose it feels good <laughs> it's like it's like a easier covid test and i actually little, yeah. I, I got my dad one i don't want to say it too loud in case you can hear me but i got my dad one for his birthday coming up in a few days so i know that'll be a sick Great. gift anyway is, is he not gonna he might listen to the pod now ah uh, he doesn't listen then we're good okay what, <laughs> you gotta get your family members giving us you gotta get them giving us views here like. my mom listens every now and then <laughs> anyway manscaped is dedicated to help you level up your full body grooming game the perfect package 3.0 kit comes with the essential lawnmower 3.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer with a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine this is the best trimmer on the market for those of you in need of a chest or ball shave. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. You can also adjust settings to get a length you like and you can stay on top of it with almost no effort at all. Don't ruin any vibes this spring break or upcoming summer with some with some peaking pubes coming out of your swimsuit. <laughs> I haven't read this yet. Be sure to use their crop cleanser body wash to help your hair and skin feel healthy and fresh. Inside the perfect package, you'll also find Manscaped Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer because we know how painful chafing can be when you're wearing your bathing suit all day. You'll also find the Crop Reviver Ball Toner, a spray-on testy toner that's designed to give your boys a little slice of heaven. For a limited time, listeners get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag, $39 value, and the patented high-performance reduced chafing manscaped boxers get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code showbound at manscaped.com do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job once again that's 20 percent off and free shipping with the code showbound at manscaped.com say aloha to your new beautiful balls with manscaped holy that was a mouthful <laughs> i was gonna make a ball joke there but i'll leave it um <laughs> yeah dude the but the manscaped ads although they may be a little long they're they're pretty funny i actually that was the first time i read that one i didn't read it first and um not only did i nail it but it actually made me laugh a little bit so pretty funny like respect to manscaped their audio marketing team's nasty like i you basically every podcast you listen to you're gonna hear a manscaped ad <laughs> you know what i mean yeah I, I mean they got the they got the uh essentials to be sending it out and stuff and sponsoring so yeah, might as well be hearing it from everyone, right? And the I, the funniest one from Manscaped, I think, is the Gronk one. Have you seen like Rob I Gronk? I did. Yeah, <laughs> shaving the bush. 
Dude, no matter what Gronk does, like as a brand, you gotta love to have a guy like him in your in your market. You know, he's just the funniest guy there is. What a what a beauty. But yeah, anyway, maybe we'll we'll have to get him on for a segment or something. We gotta get Gronk on. Someone someone insta DM him and, and send him our way. But yeah, without any further ado, I think we'll send it over to Seth Jarvis now. All right. Um, welcome to the pod, Jarvie. Super happy to have you on. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. All right. And uh, that, that was our second take. I kind of screwed up the first <laughs> one, so the listeners can know that. Um, but uh, just left sh- Chicago Wolves. Uh, the AHL and is now back with his home team and uh, in Portland with the Portland Winterhawks of the WHL. So um, what was it like um, getting over there and how's the first few days been back with the team? Yeah, it's been nice. I think going from Chicago where you're with surrounded by a bunch of older guys and only have a couple couple young guys to hang out with. I think here I'm kind of right in the middle age group. So it's been nice to be back with the guys and just kind of mess around and uh, and start uh, getting ready for our season. Yeah, and obviously Chicago to Portland. Uh, did you have to do a quarantine or anything like that to uh, be able to get in there with your team and in, uh, in the dub? I think I was only I was only shut down for like three days and that was just because i was flying in so not nothing too bad yeah that's pretty nice over there out west um and out east i guess there's like a lot better cases in ontario obviously so yeah they take it a lot lighter and then being in the states as well yeah it's 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 better than whatever's going on in ontario right now yeah that's uh that's no doubt about that (laughs) so i want to i just want to show you a little clip and um sorry for the audio listeners but for the youtube listeners i'll throw it in so they can see it but um, Ryan Suzuki, your teammate over there in Chicago and, and our friend told me that you claim to be a scratch golfer. Before. <laughs> if I feel like, you know what it's going to be. Yeah. But what's your golf game? Like, all right. I never told him I was a scratch golfer, but I'm pretty decent. I'm all right. But this clip is going to just put oh, whatever I say. It's not going to, not going to do it justice. This is, this is horrible. Cards, you take a look at this. Let's see it. Let's see it. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's unreal, man. The ball never left the mat. That's at Top Golf, and um, yeah, for the audio listeners, <laughs> Jarvi just took a big <laughs> swing. Maybe maybe clipped the tee under the ball, and the ball went about three inches forward. So, oh. what, do, what do you think of that? Yeah, I did that like six times that night. I was just all over the map, but yeah, yeah, I can't. You can't back that one up there. Hey, hey, you know what? It's all right. It, it wasn't on the golf course or anything. So uh, <laughs> he may be a scratch golfer. He may take a few of those around. And hey, if it, if it doesn't go past the tee deck, it doesn't count as a shot. So he's no. still looking good on that one. <laughs> Dude, my first time ever golfing was actually with Zook. And, and you may know, but Zook's a sick golfer. Eh? He's really good. Yeah. And, yeah, um, he is. It was my first time. It was like late October, freezing cold. I didn't have a glove. My hands were frozen. So I take a swing at the ball and miss embarrass myself like i don't know it was just it was tough and and he's a tough critic because he's so good at everything so yeah i don't know but anyway like we said you get to start the year playing for the chicago wolves with zook and the boys and just take us through that experience you know you already said older guys different vibes but how did that go for you yeah it was awesome i think it was my first time kind of living on my own and being all up uh all up by myself i was rooming with uh with reese actually jameson reese so it was nice to be with another young guy but yeah we uh we tried cooking the first like two, three days that kind of went out the window and we started Uber eats and everything and just kind of figuring out that way. But yeah, it was fun. The hockey was awesome. The team was great, but yeah, the living part was definitely tough. The first like week I know Zooks and Zooks was all over the map. He was, he's <laughs> someone that we had to lean on. He had, he had the only car. So he was driving like seven guys to the rink every day and it was, it was a mess. You know what I love about that, Ross? Because he just says, F the cooking. I'm done. I'm just going to Uber Eats it. I'm, I'm playing pro hockey. I got the money, so I might as well just spend the per diem on uh, Uber Eats every night. What a treat. That's oh, unreal. Man. It's so funny hearing, because uh, every guy we have on right, like lately has kind of just been starting their first pro experience, and Cards, you did it not too long ago as well, but hearing everybody just they're always like oh i don't know how to cook i can't figure out what to eat i don't know how to show off do my laundry like it's so funny every time having these guys on so for the listeners yeah, well, we hear we hear from these guys rask and they're they're like yeah like i'm i'm making do like i'm figuring out like jarvi just straight up says no like i guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I just cool. ordered it they're all doing I love it. that that's good honesty right there um what was the adjustment i mean you already touched on a bit the games but the adjustment to the actual level in the hl and for the listeners 11 points in nine games in the AHL. So, I mean, it looks like the adjustment was pretty seamless, but how do you find it? 
yeah, it was tough. I think especially for me, I'm a smaller guy. So it was, I'm going against like Cody McLeod and like Cody Franz and like <laughs> three times a week I'm getting tossed around. But like, I mean, the speed, the speed's not crazy. It's not I'm a crazy amount faster. So that was pretty good for me. But yeah, I just getting, I'd go in the corners and it was like, I wasn't even there. They just pick me up on my jersey and just push me to the side. But I think other than that, I think the adjustment, to, uh, it's still hockey. So you still go out there and try to make plays and, and have fun. But yeah, the, the physical part of it was just nuts. I guess we'll send it back to the beginning. Kind of um, you grew up in Winnipeg um, and just kind of dominated every level. We see that you're a point producing guy and uh, just putting up those points all the way up. When did you kind of realize that you wanted to pursue hockey and then obviously going 11th overall in the WHL draft uh, that's kind of, when it became reality. So how did, how did you kind of know that uh, you were meant to be a hockey player? Yeah. I always loved hockey. I think that was, yeah, I grew up like my house backed onto a, to an outdoor rink. So I was out there all the time and it was, it's pretty easy for me to fall in love. But yeah, I think probably when I was like nine or 10, I realized that maybe I'm pretty good at this and I might be able to do something with it. But uh, yeah, I think before that it was just kind of, I was never, never like a great player. Like some of those other guys when they were young, like, like putting up crazy amounts of points. I was kind of a greasy guy, just playing a little dirty, dirty style and just kind of tapping pucks in the net. But I think, yeah, when I turned about 10 or 11, I started, started to kind of figure it out and started playing, playing more of a skill game. And now it's just kind of, just kind of taken off a little bit, but yeah, it's been, it's been a fun ride. So yeah, probably nine or 10 just kind of got off track there. Yeah. And then going 11th overall is a, uh, obviously a huge deal. And for the listeners who don't know, I think this might be our first dub guest. And um, the difference in the dub is they do their draft a year before. So it's a bantam draft. Um, and then they have to wait a year as an underager, unless there's certain exemptions or they get that few call up games. But uh, what was your draft year like for you in bantam? Yeah, it's, it's weird. I think they, they do it pretty young. So you're, you're 14, you have to make kind of a decision on if you want to play college hockey or if you want to kind of pursue that route. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty young age to kind of make that, that big of a choice and that big of a decision. But yeah, it was, it was cool. I was trying out for our provincial team at the time. So I found out like two hours later, I missed like a hundred calls from the coach and the GM and stuff saying I got drafted. But when I found out it was fun and obviously I had no clue where Portland was being from Winnipeg, but after a quick couple Google searches, I was, I was pretty excited to kind of head down here. Yeah, no. And, and for the listeners, Portland's actually one of the, one of the cooler places to play and, you know, beautiful big rink and uh, crazy fans there. So yeah, like Cardsy said, you got that limited number of games in your underage year, like your minor midget year, and you got to play 11 games that season. Um, what was the adjustment playing at that level at such a young age? Like, how did you find that? It was basically like, it was a lot similar to the adjustment I did in the AHL. Just some massive guys just kind of tossed me around again. But uh, I think when I was 15, it was, it was, I was just scared. I was playing like guys on my team, like, like Cody Glass, Kiefer Bellows, like Henry Okahar, like all these sick players. And I was just kind of sitting on the bench with my bird cage on, just kind of watching them go up and down the ice. And they're, they're unreal. And I was just kind of having a fun time just riding the bench. But it was it was cool just to kind of see how they operate and what it was like down there. But, yeah, those 11 games were were tough for sure. Yeah, bro, I'd be, I'd be shitting my pants. And it's, <laughs> it's the most honest guest we've had on about it, too. He just owns every minute of it. And I love that because uh, the listeners are getting like a real scoop of what it actually is. Like, you know, like you're there, you're, you're scared, like with big names like that, you're not going to sugarcoat it. Yeah, no, that, and this is what we want to, like, we, we started this so we can showcase some personalities. So I'm already liking this one, Jeremy, but um, I thought Cardi was going to ch- chime in there about the, the cage because I know your first year you had to wear the bubble. So yeah, yeah was, that was your I first full year though, right? I was going to mention it for the, uh, yeah, 15 games, uh, playoffs, but yeah, no, it was, it was a joke, but yeah, you just look like, <laughs> feel like an idiot out there. Everyone's got the visors on and you're just rocking bird cage in your situation, but I had the bubble going, but yeah, no. <laughs> well, I just want to know, like, you know, you said like a smaller, smaller kid, even though you're not too small, but, uh, what was your off season like heading into your first full season in the WHL? Cause obviously you're trying to bulk up stuff like that. So were you working extra hard there? Yeah, I was just, I never really took the gym too seriously before that. I always, I always loved skating on the ice and doing all that kind of skill stuff. And then in the gym, I'd, I'd make my rounds, but I wouldn't, uh, I wasn't too dialed in, especially at that young of an age, but yeah, that year I really had to focus in and really, really prepare for going into my first junior year and just kind of take it seriously, get, get bigger, get stronger. And, and just kind of make uh, make it so I'm not as easy to kind of push push off the puck and stuff like that. 
Yeah, and I can I can uh, just chime in on that one too, Rask. Like once, obviously, like that's kind of a cool thing about the Bantam draft for them. Like they get the eleven games, or in his situation, eleven. But um, it really lets you like it's a wake up call, and uh, then you don't really miss a year. A lot of guys you see in the O might have a tough sixteen year, and then kind of realize like how important the gym actually is. So. I feel like that's a really good point. And then after a good year in the, uh, in the gym there, he said um, your first real season, you had, you had a great, great season stepped in with 39 points in 61 games as a rookie, a team that made the playoffs. So how did you play that year? And uh, what do you feel about that year? Just like kind of flip the switch for you. Yeah, it was, it was cool again. I think uh, I had a little bit more of a role than when I was 15. I, I got to see a little bit of peeper time and, a little bit more of a regular shift, but I was still sitting behind glass again. He just decided to come back for his 19 year old year and just tear it up again. So I was, I was, yeah, my year was just sitting under his wing and just watching what he did. And every practice the coach would be like, Oh, you see what glass did you see, see what he's doing. And I'd be like, yeah, and just kind of not note it down. And I kind of take that in because when you're 16, that year is obviously important, but it's not, it's just kind of building up until, till your draft year and until that moment. So it was just kind of a learning year for me. I was, I did fine. I think you see some of those numbers from the guys in the old, like Perfetti, but what, like 70 points in a 16 year old year, you look over there and you're like, Oh God. But uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was, it was awesome. It was a great team and it was just a great time. Yeah. And I, and you just mentioned Fett's putting up 70. I'm so I'm on his team there. I put up like six, six that oh. year. <laughs> Fett's throws up 74. I'm like, yeah, it, that's, that's a little bit different for, so for you, <laughs> is it isn't too, too bad. Um, but yeah, and then you, we just mentioned your team made the playoffs that year. What was it like as a 16 year old? I know I was fortunate enough to go on a deep run, but, um, you were obviously more of a key piece to your team. So what was that like with the crowd and everything in your first taste of the playoffs? I had maybe, I had some of the toughest, I had the toughest playoff. I think anyone could have as a 16 year old, especially as a rookie, the fans and everything was sick, but we were playing against Spoke. And it's is so bad. We played two games and spoke to start. We won one, lost one, whatever. We go back to Portland for game three and four. And the way it was going, I'd play the second period, wouldn't play the third. And I was perfectly fine with that. I'd ride the bench, just cheer on the boys. And it goes to overtime in game three. And I'm like, oh, God. And they put me out there for some reason. I'm cold for like 25 minutes. I, they throw me out there. Puck goes into our D zone or whatever. I get the puck, skate up the wall, strip from behind. They go down score. And I'm like, oh. That is no. terrible. And so I'm like, okay, whatever. One game. It's 2-1. We're fine. So game four, back in Portland, same thing. Don't play in the second. Don't play third. Goes to OT again. I'm out there again. I chip the puck out of bounds, delay a game penalty, a score on the peeper, 3-1. I'm like, oh, you can't get much worse than that. So like, I get back to the dressing. The 20 bombs are pissed. Like Everyone's like looking at me. I can feel people staring at me. I'm just sitting there like, this is, this is the worst case like I can't bounce back from this and then we lose and we lose in game five and spoke but yeah that was my first taste of playoff hockey that's that's a tough one man <laughs> uh, I, I was just feeling for you just hearing about that because I know like as a 16 year old and like in the CHL and like any junior league probably you're you're just you're scared to list of the 20 bombs and like you, you don't want to upset them or upset anyone and then to do like kind of that in playoffs <laughs> Just must have been an absolute soak, and uh, but yeah, you know it is what it is. It's uh, it's the game of the hockey, but uh, that's an awesome story. <laughs> you know what? At least it wasn't like a game seven screw up. You know, get it yeah. get it earlier, or else you, you'd never you wouldn't have you on the pod, dude. Like I don't want to be associated <laughs> with that. But no, I mean it's it's a learning experience because you know what you've been through that now. It's something not a lot of people have, and you may be in a similar situation or a teammate may be in the future, and now you know how to handle it, what to say. So yeah. stuff like that, although it sucks in the moment, you you carry that stuff and that experience with you, and it goes a long way. But um, you know, speaking of that, heading into your next year, your draft year, and uh, just a huge turnaround, ninety eight points in fifty eight games. Is that right? Did I get ninety eight points? Yeah. Oh my god, and. That's your second season. So, like, did you do anything differently in that off season heading up to that? Not really, no. I just, I think it was just a combination of just training and then getting more of an opportunity. I think all those big guys were gone, so it was kind of my turn to kind of slide into that role. And so I think when you see more ice time, you obviously have a better chance of kind of producing. But, yeah, it was just everything kind of aligned and just kind of went well for me. Yeah, how big is the confidence factor for you? Like, were you were you rolling early and then you just were feeling it? Is is that how it went down? Not really. No, I had actually a I had a really tough start to the year. 
or like not tough, but it wasn't, wasn't what I was expecting. I think I was for the first half, like we played 32 games or whatever. Uh, I was maybe at 33 points and I was like, this is, this isn't going the way as I planned. And then the last like 26, I think I had 63 or something, just oh kind of something, something kind of flipped and, and I had, I had a better second half for sure. Okay, so are you are you checking the rankings all year, being like, this is where I'm, I want to be, or why am I this low? And then obviously seeing your rank shoot up probably in the second half. Like, are you just keeping an eye? Uh, I did in the first half, and I think that's a big reason why I was struggling. I think I was looking at it and being like, oh, well, like I think I'm better than him, or he's ahead of me, and whatever. And then second half, I was just like, screw it, like I don't care anymore. I'll just yeah. whatever happens happens, and it just ended up going well for me. Yeah, we, we talk about this with, with most of the guys and, you know, we've been lucky enough to have some some good guests on who've been drafted high and keeping your eye on the rank seems to be like a, a bit of a confidence issue. Cards, would you agree like with, with what we understand? You've been through it yourself. It's kind of a, a bit of a mental grind. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this so many times now and I think that we get the same answer from every guy. It's just like when I don't focus on it, I'm doing better and I'm just like not worried about it. And I feel like those are, opinions don't matter and we always say it like these rankings um they can be an ego boost or uh just kill your confidence as well so you could go either way but like the only thing that matters is whoever's making that phone call to make that draft pick yeah Yeah. exactly yeah for sure um but yeah no i guess we'll take it into the nhl draft now that we're on the subject here and uh just like what was that day like for you going 13th overall uh to the carolina hurricanes pretty special um so you get to spend that with your family and did you have a lot of contact with Carolina leading up? Yeah. Yeah. I had a, I had a bunch of family and friends over, so I was lucky to have it kind of with them and, and spend it with them. But no, yeah, I talked to Carolina maybe once the whole, the whole year in like September, mm-hmm. just like when they're wow. coming around, just introducing themselves and they're like, Hey, like we're Carolina, whatever. We, I met them in like, I don't remember like Swift current or something. And I never thought of anything of it. And then they came to pick and I was like, okay, like this isn't going to be me. Like I talked to them once in September. There's no way. And then they picked me and I was just like, what? I was never expected. I thought I was going either uh, when I had to, was it Nashville? Cause I talked to them a lot or, or Edmonton right after. So, but yeah, so I'm pumped to go there and it's, it's been sick so far. Yeah, man. And North Carolina, you're going to be living the life there hopefully soon in the next few years here, but that's actually dirty. And that's one that we haven't heard. Like we're, yeah, we kind of have, like it's gone both ways. Like people feel like they have good talks with one team and then they end up going to another, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And I know um, you got a lot to look forward to. I heard Carolina's great. I live with Blake Murray. You probably haven't met him yet, but uh, Carolina Oh one pick, but yeah, no, he said, he said they're animals in the fitness testing and stuff. The assault bike and well, stuff. Well, look at so, like, look at the coach, man. They're gonna be animals. <laughs> Brendan Moore's a I beast. Mean, when you got Rod the Bod running the bench, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna have a tight ship in the gym. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll keep her rolling into uh, into the fresh year here. And you you started the year with the World Juniors camp even before the AHL and now the Dub. Um, what was that experience like? I know you've played on the Canadian level before with Team Canada uh, multiple times, but uh, world juniors obviously bigger than everything else um what was that experience like for you this year and then just to be able to build on it going into next year's team yeah it was cool i think uh, the whole thing was it was a little bit different than everyone expecting with the bubble and and kind of just going day in and day out you only really go to your hotel room and then back to the rink and stuff like that and they threw in a we had a two-week quarantine like right in the middle of camp which was just threw everything off and kind of I think threw up a lot of guys rhythms so that was a little bit weird but yeah it was it was fun I met a lot of new guys it's kind of how I first got introduced to to Zooks and and Reese are there but yeah it was it was cool obviously got cut but that was a sick team so I, I wasn't expecting a whole lot but yeah it was it was awesome and I thought I had a fun time and I'm just pumped hopefully I can do it next year yeah, yeah absolutely and there's no doubt you're probably probably set up to uh do real well And I know uh, we have it written down to ask you if you got any stories from the world juniors. I'm sure there's not too much to tell as you guys were all bubbled up in the COVID there and then just kind of on your own, but anything, anything fun from there? Yeah, not nothing really. You're just kind (laughs) of locked down all day. I think during quarantine, like I know some guys, like I, I just got into video games at that point. So I was logging like eight hours a day. And like I heard some guys are logging like 14 hours a day on COD and stuff like that, just putting absolute shifts. But I think other than that, like you're not really in contact with a lot of people. So you don't have a lot of time to kind of mess around and stuff like that, especially at like a hockey kind of event. They don't let you 
kind of goof off or, or do what you want. So it's been, they run a tight ship there. So it's hard to, it's hard to kind of have any good stories from it. Yeah. Yeah. Are, what, what I'm, game are you playing? I was right into modern warfare for okay. the longest time, just repping Warzone, trying to, trying to figure it out. I still suck. So it's not even fun for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, we actually, we talk about this basically every episode now where some guys are video game guys some aren't and on the pod like i'm the video game guy and cardsy isn't so we always uh it's always a fun topic of conversation but you know from there you get into carolina hurricanes camp some familiar faces from your world junior camp and what was that experience like for you because you were you get to be around basically the real roster whereas like you'd normally be with a lot of the prospects so so how was that actually kind of getting to be with the team and did anybody take you under their wing there yeah, it was cool. Uh, the way they had it kind of set up is like there was like nine of us who were mostly AHL guys and like uh, like maybe taxi squad players and stuff like that and a couple of young prospects. And we'd have our own skate and then the, the real team would skate like right after us. So we honestly didn't have much contact with them. We played one inner squad game with them like against those guys and that was kind of it. But yeah, like the, the skates we had were, were sick. I think it was all all guys like right when we got there, they told us like you're not making the team. So just kind of enjoy your time here and, and see what you do. Interesting. But uh, yeah, so we just had fun with it. We were just kind of out there just having fun and messing around. And then you'd get off the ice and you see the real team go on there. And I felt like a 12 year old at the glass, just kind of watching them and, and seeing like Aho and Svechnikov and those guys are disgusting. So it was cool. And then playing them in the inner squad game, I've never played against someone like as smart as Aho. And like he was doing stuff like you wouldn't even think of trying or like, it was it was way over my head and I was just watching them like my jaws drop but it was fun it was a good experience for me for sure so like you said you you get in and they tell you like you're probably you're not really making the team is that for you like you're hurt or you kind of probably knew you weren't going to make it and are you just now the pressure's off and you can just really focus on having fun and learning yeah a little bit of both I think obviously you want to you want to go in there like yeah I want to make the team or whatever but they have a sick roster so I I I always knew like there's not a very good chance that I'm going to make this team so when he said that it hurt a little bit, but I was like, yeah, like that makes complete sense. So then, yeah, like you said, every, I went into the camp and the next day I, I could high step around the ice if I wanted to and just kind of have fun with it and just kind of mess around. And I think that's, it helped out a lot just with confidence and just trying new stuff instead of kind of worrying about making a mistake and thinking, oh, I'm not going to make it now and stuff like that. Yeah, and exactly. When you're at your first camp, I know even for junior, right? Like you can, you're clenching the stick a bit tighter and stuff, but just to, for them to be able to tell you that kind of, eases the nerves and you can just kind of go out and play your game like you said and then following this pro stint you're you're back in portland now as we uh resume with your career here and uh how's your team shaping up are you guys looking good to do anything any any damage this year or what yeah i think so i think we have a we have a young team we we've always been young the two years i've been here but we got even younger somehow this year so it'll be interesting i think uh I'm pushed more into a leader role. So that's something new for me, just kind of figuring that one out. But yeah, it'll be fun. I think we have a good team. We have a lot of good returning guys and we have a couple guys that uh, are new to the league. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they do, but we look pretty good right now. Yeah, and being, this just kind of came to my head and being a young team, like you got, you got a, a lot of young prospects coming up and but you guys got even O fives in the lineup this year, probably then with the, with the underage rule, some games, so for your experience playing with a guy like glass, you said like you picked up so much from him. What are you trying to do for the young guys to just kind of make them feel comfortable and kind of show them their way in this league? Yeah. Just basically like uh, just don't let them get isolated. I think when you're young, you can kind of go off on your own and be kind of scared to talk to the older guys. Like you said, you're terrified of the 20 bombs when you're 16. So I can yeah. only imagine when you're 15 or 16 coming in, we have some we have some good older guys and some good guys around my age, so I, I could see how they could be intimidated. But just showing them that you're you're another one of the players and one of the guys, so just shooting the shit with them and stuff like that, just having fun and just messing around, basically. Yeah, no, it's it's funny, like, and you're starting to see that shift now in every junior league, like at all levels of junior hockey, of you know <laughs> maybe less uh, intimidated. Everyone's on the team, right? You're all there together, so um, it's kind of good that we're going getting to that point now, and. Um, I also wanted to say you, you signed an ELC with the Carolina Hurricanes. So did you, did you reward yourself with anything? Uh, well, being that happened, I got my first check when I was down in Chicago. So I was around Zooks and if you know him, he's a massive sneaker head. So he influenced me to buy shoes and he got me on that gold app. So I've been scrolling through there. So I bought a couple of pairs of shoes 
but nothing, uh, nothing too crazy, nothing too big yet. I know, I know I've heard a few guys like my buddy, uh, Ozzy Weisbaus, uh, San Jose bought a car and stuff like that already, but, uh, I haven't gone that far yet. The reason I ask is, uh, our partners at Gavin hockey wealth specialists believe that your goals matter after hundreds of early morning practices and countless hours on the ice or in the gym, you truly earned your success and you deserve to enjoy it. For over 20 years, the team at Gavin has assisted professional hockey players with setting goals and more importantly, providing them with a game plan to achieve them. Whether it's a house, a car, a cottage, or even supporting your family, it is all within reach when you partner with a pro. Check them out at gavingroup.ca. Yo, I just wanted to throw in though, like I honestly think, or ask if we asked Jarvie, if we said, okay, like you got, like if he told us like, hey, I got my check beside Zooks and then he said, okay, I'm going to give you one minute to figure out what I bought first because he was an influence on it. We would have guessed shoes. Like this guy balls out on his outfits. He actually yeah. loves it. Yeah. It's not. He's got, he's got good style. So respect to Zook, man. And uh, he's a friend of the show. So we like to. Yeah. We'll give him, we'll give him the bump. We're going to, we're going to compliment him here because he got us Jarvie on here too, which is another <laughs> big thing. So yeah. Zooks is getting a lot of publicity in this episode, but uh, well-deserved, <laughs> I guess. Well, you teamed me up with that early golf video, which I've been crying at <laughs> since I got it, man. I can't wait for the listeners. I guess at this point they've already seen it, but um we can jump into some fan questions here and uh cards you want to stick around here i know it's like 4 a.m for cards right now <laughs> yeah no i'll stick i'll stick around I'll, I'll wait around i mean we only got about 10 minutes left yeah so we'll get into some fan questions we got a lot um had to pick a couple good ones but one that i was actually gonna ask and because you've been so honest with us this whole time like are you upset having to go back to portland after proving you know you can play really well in the ahl and Others in the OHL, like Zook, like we said, they're able to just stay there. So obviously, if it were me, I'd be like, yeah, you know, I wish I could stick around. So you like, if you can be honest with this answer, like, how do you feel? Yeah, like you said, like, obviously, I want to play there. I want to stick around there. I think playing at a pro level anywhere is is awesome. It's it's a cool experience. But I think uh, I think when you're at that level, you realize how much of a business it is, and and that can get a little bit stressful. So. I think coming back down to junior, I'm with all my buddies and it's a little bit easier to just uh, enjoy the game a little bit longer. So I'm mad at, I'm mad that I'm coming back, but I think I'm also, I'm also happy because I can to enjoy it a little bit more. And, and if this is my last year, if not, I'm, I'm super happy to be here and, and just kind of have fun with everyone. And it's, it's almost like you're a WHL underage year where you kind of get those, that 11 game taste or whatever. So you got, yeah. you got a couple games under the belt, you know what, what to expect. And, yeah, everybody asks this every episode, but what, what stick do you use and what specs? Yeah, I use a Bauer Vapor Fly Light, and then I have – it started off as a, as a line A curve, and then I just kind of messed with it a little bit. Okay. Do you have any starstruck moments from your time at Hurricanes camp? I, you talked about Aho already, but anything just stick out at you like, wow, I'm, I'm in the show right now? Yeah, probably sitting on the bench next to like Aho and like Nino Niederreiter and those guys. Like usually I'm sitting next to the bench with like a 16, 17 year old. Now I'm sitting next to Aho and Niederreiter. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. You're sitting on the bench next to a guy like Cardi with his gross hair <laughs> out of his bucket. <laughs> yeah. Nasty buddy. No, no, your hair is buzzing. It's, it's good. And the fans voted that your hair is better than mine. So it is. Yeah. It is. But the fans have spoken and I think Jarvie would agree with them. So hey. well, we're gonna try it too, man. I'm looking to get a nice fresh, fresh haircut soon. You so. got to get a mully for the playoffs. Come on. I may have to rock a molly for the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Rally the boys up. Just get everyone fired up here in Sur. Just everyone's going nuts. Get the mullet wave here too. <laughs> oh yeah. Send it over. Um, funny one. Did you have any challenges living with Jamison Reese? I mean, we talked about the cooking already. Anything else? Cooking was massive. That was just, it was embarrassing at some points. Like we would sit there, look at each other. Like, what are we going to make? <laughs> or like we go grocery shopping and we'd be like, okay, we're going to pick up like, normal like stuff to make food and we'd come back with like six gatorades and a bag of candy or something like that <laughs> so like us together was it was tough for a little bit but i think other than cooking like that was basically it like he we meshed pretty well together i think it's better than if we didn't have camera we didn't like each other but we went pretty well so everything kind of came pretty easy yeah that's good did, did, did yeah. he like i know i got roommates and we, we bug each other all the time like I'm living with Tomer and Murray who you'll probably meet in the next year or so. But uh, no, like, is there anything that he did that just drive you nuts? Yeah. He, uh, so like there's, so the way our room was set up, we had like a living room and then we had two separate bedrooms and each bedroom had a TV in it. 
And so like I would hook up my Xbox to my TV in my bedroom. He would, and I was like, okay, he's going to hook up his to his in the bedroom. So that'd make sense. And he decided to put his in the living room. Oh. And so it'd be like 1230 at night and I'm trying to sleep and he's buzzing Warzone or something yelling to his buddies on the mic. <laughs> and I'm just trying to like get some shots and he's just screaming in our living room at like 12 or one. <laughs> and that, that sent me a little bit sometimes, but like, I was, I never brought it up to him. Cause I was, I don't know, I don't know why I didn't, I should have, but yeah, it was just, that was something that bugged me a little bit, but other than that, that was basically it. <laughs> Oh, that's so, good, so Rask, you're gonna have to clip this tag Jameson race, and then he'll he'll get the memo <laughs> that he needs to switch it when they're back there together. Yeah, yeah. for real, that's uh, that's so funny. I was like that with my roommates too, <laughs> and, uh, but they didn't care. I was in my room, but I was just loud enough that everybody heard it. Um, <laughs> I actually, I want to give a little tip for you and cards and any of the, the hockey players listening. I mean, it's so basic, but for me, when I first moved out, the biggest, the easiest meal I think everyone should just have this. Always have some like some pasta or spaghetti on hand and some frozen meatballs, just throw them all in a pot, boil it up. And now you got some easy spaghetti and meatballs, healthy, simple. And you know, you can't panic. It's just a simple, simple one. So you thanks. Know. Now you're my nutritionist too. Take, take that <laughs> Maybe you get the whole, the whole wheat one if you're feeling good. So um, we'll keep it moving here though. Actually, this, this one is funny. It's not even a fan question. It's my own question, but Keyshawn Gervais, this TikTok star, no, he's not, yeah. not a TikTok star, but like, I actually, he's funny. Like he's funny on TikTok, but getting, getting like posting stuff like that on TikTok. Um, is he getting ripped on every game? Like, is everyone just carving him like the other teams and stuff chirping him? Yeah. I think he gets his fair, especially last year when he was kind of in the midst of his TikTok stardom, he was hearing it from other teams, but I think like he did, like we would chirp him, but like we wouldn't, after a while it gets old like you're not gonna rip this guy every day about tiktok like no yeah, one really yeah. cares so hearing it from other teams though like you know like when you're chirping someone like maybe your teammate will step in and say something but like when he's getting chirped about tiktok like no one was kind of helping him out we were letting him fight his own battles but he handled it pretty well to be honest like if i was getting ripped on that much i would probably shut it down and just never log into the app again but he he kept it pushing and, and honestly so like i think he was making money off it so i mean if he's collecting a little bit of cash i wouldn't i wouldn't hate it but yeah he got ripped on a few times yeah i, yeah, I, I can only imagine rask like just like doing it like i i see like we'd see like even if a guy like threw up one post on his tiktok you just get ripped and like i mean it's classic but yeah like jervy said like you'll leave him alone after a little bit but the 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 other team's getting old but uh if you're bringing in cash, why not do it? I mean, it's yeah. a little side hustle and you're just dancing around in a camera. It can't be too bad. Yeah, yeah we don't get paid enough in the CHL to, to <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll stay cash. away from this one. I don't <laughs> um you will keep it going. A couple more. Uh what's your favorite road rink in the WHL? There's some unique ones. Yeah, Seattle's sick. That's like our rival. So like they chant like Portland sucks for the first 10 minutes of the game. So that's pretty nasty. That's okay. sick. Cool one. Um what do you think you need to improve on to make it to the NHL? Uh, building strength is big for me. And then just on the ice, it's just kind of rounding out my defensive game. I like to score goals, but I also got to be good at kind of keeping them out of the net. So that's that's been a big oh, focus. Yeah. That's a big one. A lot of people need to work on that. Um, and last fan question. Uh, is there anything you like doing off the ice? Maybe play the guitar or something like that? <laughs> Zooks was trying to teach me the guitar in, uh, in Chicago. So that was... I can play like the first three chords of Tennessee whiskey and that's about it. But uh, yeah, video games is big. I think being out in Portland, it never snows or anything. So you can play golf like nine months out of the year. So we go and do that all the time. But other than that, that's basically kind of it. Man, we're, we're giving Zooks way too much hype now. I I just <laughs> over the line now, like if, if there's any females listening to this, like his DMs are going to be blowing up. The guy does it <laughs> far. We said he's got the best style ever. He's not afraid to ball out with his money. He, like he's a good golfer. We said like everything like, so, so I mean too much, we got to cut it off. So <laughs> questions there. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And um, before we wrap it up, I just want to say, I don't know if Cardi told you we're going to be sending you a beautiful Axel watch. You know, you can go pick one off the website. I'll fire it over to you and you let us know what, which one you want and you'll be looking good. Maybe you'll be looking as good as Zook um, when you're wearing. 
<laughs> Sorry, I had to throw one more in. So, <laughs> dude, Zeus gonna be texting me. Like I'm literally his hype hype man right now, but no, you'll be looking sweet in your Axle watch. Our listeners, they love the Axle watches. They're gonna be rocking them too. So yeah, I mean that's all for me. Really want to thank you for coming on. It was a lot of fun. Cards, you got anything before we wrap it up? Yeah, no, I was just gonna add like it's not huge um, out west yet. Like Axle hasn't really gone too far out there. So Jarvie would be good good uh representation of axel out there and uh but no just super happy to have you on love the honesty with all the answers too i think that's the most honest one we've had but yeah thanks for coming on jarvy yeah sweet thank you guys all right and thanks to seth jarvis for that pretty cool having him on a guy who is probably like you know on the verge of being an nhl player but uh has to be back in the whl this year um but yeah what do you think of that cards yeah and yeah great dude to have on um well spoken there and then just to just to hear from him he's a guy like you just said who's going back to the whl and i feel like he's a guy who's been underrated for a little bit like i feel like he doesn't get as much hype going into the nhl draft as i thought he should have um and then with the amount of points he put up last year in portland and then just to do what he did in the ahl it just really proves that he is as legit as that draft pick says for sure and definitely probably could have even gone in higher yeah no i mean his, his points and the, the numbers don't lie so good for him it was awesome having him on and uh i know you got a couple big games coming up this week and how's your team doing so far dude yeah we're coming down to the wire here so we got two games left before we go to playoffs so how it works is the top team from the division goes to these like Al Svenskin like qualifying series and stuff so like to go up to the next one then the bottom four get relegated so what we have to do to clinch the playoffs is um we have to win on Friday and then it's done we have two games left if we lost Friday then we'd have to have a different like scenario workout or whatever and win Sunday but uh no Friday's a huge game and it's at home so gearing up for that one this week um hoping to get some better sleep uh and eat right and uh, dial her in right we'll see how the boys are uh dialed on friday night and it'll it'll be a playoff atmosphere for sure yeah you'll have to keep the listeners updated and me obviously because i know everyone's wanting you and the sura team to be just firing through and getting yourself up to the next level there um would be pretty nasty and then dude that's a sick league the elsvenskin I mean, yeah, yeah, that's that would be pretty nasty. I mean, you're obviously pro- like probably not going to be there next year, I would assume, but <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I mean, COVID goes on. I'm here forever. I never come back to Canada. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, that's exciting. A lot, lot to go on. I, I haven't really been up to much here, as you know, kind of just same old chilling. But yeah, there's mm, we talked about it earlier in the episode with the O not saying anything and. But uh, you know what I did see actually, and we were, me and Rask were talking a little bit like in between the interview and stuff and said, we didn't have much in the front half. It was a chill week in the, in the NHL and not much, too much to talk about, but uh, I saw a tweet today and this kind of involves me uh, being a draft eligible saying that they're going to keep the draft in July and, uh, and not change it to their proposal that they had on the table. That's huge. So yeah, I saw that the, they were firing up tweets and stuff like that the gms were talking about with the draft day and all that stuff so cool that's gonna be big and get a summer draft hopefully i assume you'll be back home and maybe we can get a little showbound video content going on draft day and hopefully not be disappointed but i know you're putting yourself in a good position so far this year so things yeah, are uh, we'll, looking good yeah we'll see just try to keep plugging away and i mean i gotta make the most of these last few games just in case the ohl doesn't have a season yeah definitely gotta have a showing in the playoffs um now we can get to the bachelor segment but i i'll say as uh we kind of let cardsy go here because he hasn't watched it yet and i can't spoil it for him so i'm gonna do this one solo and uh cards you got anything to say before you kind of sign off yeah it was actually a heartbreaker um we got home from practice and we always watch it tuesday night before we record the bat or uh the, the segment or even the episode sometimes like it all depends but uh, we go to throw it on, sit down, get a few snacks out, just ready to go, always fired up. And then nothing comes up and we can't find it. So we're in a bit of a pickle here. Um, hopefully going to find it. My goal is I'm going to lit- watch The Bachelor before I watch our episode here tomorrow. Um, just so I'm not spoiling anything for myself. But uh, no, very disappointed. But I'm going to send it over to Rask 
Um, you guys are in good hands. I'm hoping. Let's hope he's not too opinionated this week. Um, but yeah, no. And I'm gonna edit myself back in with my send off. So we'll see you in a few. All right, first solo bastard segment. I think so. We'll try to not let Cardsy down and let not let the listeners down. I feel like it's a lot of pressure on me because usually I can count on Cardsy to to maybe straighten out my opinions, but. I guess I'll say uh, right off the bat, when the episode started, it was a pretty heavy conversation with Matt and his dad. Uh, Matt's dad came in and they talked about um, how Matt hasn't been able to have proper relationships with women in his life because his dad cheated on his mom. And they're having like a a bit of an argument that in front of everybody, like the whole world is watching that one. And uh, a little bit of an awkward conversation to have in front of millions of people. But yeah, it started off with like a heavy, heavy tone to it. Everyone was kind of feeling sad, but they picked it up. Fantasy Suites you know, it was going to be a good one. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll say this. It wasn't as dramatic as I thought, you know, you have Rachel really was the only one who was kind of upset. Normally all the girls or all the guys are going to be, you know, kind of hating each other that week because they're all having strong feelings and it's, it's tough, but Rachel was the only one who they, at least they showed that was feeling upset about it. So yeah, she was upset, but uh, she had a great overnight and time with with Matt as we know you know she got a a, one of the final two roses and I did want to say that her date was pretty bad um on top of her just feeling bad at that point like all they did was do like pottery together or whatever it reminded me of last in the bachelorette when Brendan was uh, the last one to have a date as well and they just went ring shopping or whatever and he couldn't really do anything because it was more more tasteless thing but yeah so Rachel's date wasn't that entertaining or great so it was kind of like a weird one they're not really vibing like the other ones were on the date but like i said you know that off camera time in the fantasy suites where the magic happens so good for matt good for rachel and hey michelle she also got the rose so brie it was a tough one she kind of felt like a little fake and scripted to me this episode didn't really seem too genuine so i'm kind of happy she's gone and we got a big final two like i said with uh michelle and rachel heading to next episode and meeting matt's parents so or matt's mom i i guess so it'll be a good one we're in for a good finish and they've teased a lot of drama a lot of crying so should be a good one and uh yeah we'll send it over cardsy now for his outro yeah and pre-recorded i'd just like to say uh thank you all for another week of uh continuous support i know we're on the grind um it's almost coming up on two o'clock here and just uh just wrapping her up am for me but uh no super excited about this episode and can't wait for you guys to hear it. we'll see you next week